Hey, Tim once again from the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount. And as always, we've got an open invitation for you guys to come out and be with us for service. Uh, have really wonderful services. The Lord is blessing mildly. You know, don't have to you can just say that right there you know and, and just know that God is moving uh, in, in so many areas and so many people's lives uh, they are blessed uh, and uh, if nothing else if you are saved then you are blessed because <laughs> you know that you can lay your head and have that peace that passes all understanding and lay your head down on your pillow at night and know that if you don't wake up on this side of eternity you're going to be with, absent with the body to, and be present with the Lord. That is if you're saved. Now, there is, another, there is another alternative. If you reject the Lord, then hell is going to be your home. It's just a lake of fire. God's Word tells us that hell was not made for man, but for the devil and his angels, not the ones that sinned. And uh, there's more than that that's coming to but anyway, that's a, that, that goes into something else totally. Uh, we're in the book of Job. This will be, I believe, the uh, the third uh, teaching. Uh, <laughs> it seems like we're not get, doing it very far. Uh, but well, we've got a couple chapters so far, so that's pretty good to end too. Um, we're going to be going to, uh, I, I'm going to do a little bit of a review, but we'll be going to uh, Job chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh, but uh, before that, let me go ahead and give a church service announcements. Have our service, uh, Sunday school service at 10 a.m., uh, worship service at 11. Uh, did I say 10 a.m. or 10 p.m.? 10 a.m. at 10 a.m. <laughs> Sunday school, 11 a.m. worship service, 6 p.m. our evening service, and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. we have our midweek service. So, uh, something I'm just I lost lost train of thought there for a minute. <laughs> happens a lot uh, and uh, still as far as I know our uh, vacation Bible school will be kicking off on July the 11th uh, so come out and uh, bring your children and uh, think we'll have a good time the Lord will have you know crafts and a snack after you know services and uh, uh, the, there's going to be classes for you know all the for the young all the way up to uh, adult class so uh, let me urge you and uh, exhort you and, and, you know, try to, you know, d d instead of coming and just dropping your kids off and taking off, why don't you come, come and be with them in Bible school? I think you'll enjoy it. I know a lot of people uh, that take their kids and they're not, they don't belong to any church and not go to church and everything. Uh, but I think you'll enjoy it and it be, maybe might be a good opener to show you what it's like. Uh, and I'll say this, and I say this with a knowledge of our church and knowledge of other churches that I've been in and know uh, there are churches that are still on fire and alive for God and that still is blessed by God. Uh, many I can't say that uh, because I've, maybe I've not been there or uh, I've seen the fruit that they bear. And you know we are to judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Uh, you know uh, Jesus cursed the fig tree, uh, said it wasn't bringing forth any fruit, so it was gonna be, he said pluck it up. Uh, so at any rate, uh, uh, like I said, if you uh, feel led led to come come son, just feel I feel strong just to say that. But you know why? Because I've seen too many of that. I've seen. In, in vacation Bible schools in the past, watch as the kids are being dropped off and parents will give you a quick wa a wave and then take off, uh, thinking, man, I wish they would actually come in and be part of the service and maybe get a blessing, hey, maybe get saved, or maybe return back to the Lord, uh, re repent and turn back to him. Maybe, they, maybe they've been saved in the past and turned away from the Lord. So at any rate, that uh, that date is still in effect as far as I know, July 11th. So uh, mark your calendars and uh, remember all of our uh, regular service times. 
uh, still don't know when our next youth uh, praise worship team young people service uh, is going to be yet uh, it may not be till uh, especially with vacation Bible school it may not be till next month or maybe maybe even September I'm not sure but when I get when I hear about that I will uh, I will announce that on here as well so uh, Anyway, if y'all, if you guys want to, you can be turning to Job uh, chapter two, verse one. I, I, I'm do like I said, do just a quick review here. Uh, we come to the part in verse one. Uh, just trying to sum things, up, sum it up pretty quick. Um, that uh, many things happened to Job. Uh, the Lord gave the devil license. Uh, you know, once uh, the devil or uh, God had a hedge about Job that the devil couldn't touch him uh, so but uh, God trusted Job and he and he will all the way through it as, as we'll find out uh, toward the end but uh, he uh, basically the enemy Satan issued a challenge to the Lord saying that uh, uh, does Job fear God for naught? Uh, you can imagine, uh, and the same way today, we'll, we'll, we'll arc that over and compare it today. A lot of people that have great substance and everything, uh, their heart most of the time is far from the Lord uh, and are miserable people. But Job, he had many things that said was uh, one of the richest men in the East, as it said. And uh, but yet he offered offerings to the Lord for his children and he said he did that continually and but when the all the areas of his life was given the hedge was taken down uh, the devil attacked him and he lost many things he lost a lot of his substance uh, pretty much all of it and even lost his children in the process and right at the very end here have to excuse me <laughs> mowed the yard so allergy starting up here uh, at the very end of the uh, chapter one it said uh, I'm gonna start 20 at, at right after he finds out that his children have been killed it said by a great wind from the wilderness uh, start at verse 20 and just read to 22 it said then Job arose and ran his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped boy that it's a lot so that uh, we should do uh, like I said uh, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of halfway there as it is right now anyway so uh, uh, it, 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 hey I, it would it, it would do me a world of good it would do you a world of good to I mean lay pro like I said if you gotta lay your head flat down if you need to put a pillow down whatever and, and plant your face in it and pray and be an intercessor in prayer before, instead of having 18, 20 second quick prayers and then that be it. Uh, and I'm guilty of that as well. Uh, I should I should pray more. I think we should all pray more. Uh, really and truly, I know we can't all the time. Uh, as, but as I said, I believe in the message yesterday, uh, there are times that, of course, you, you can't be at an altar of repentance or prayer or be home to where you can pray sometimes you're driving down the road and sometimes uh, you're talking to the Lord as you're driving uh, heard a lot of people say that you know has you know saying having a good time talking to the Lord and the Lord putting stuff on their heart and uh, you know of course not hearing him verbally not hearing an audible voice it's not what I'm saying but you know in your heart because a lot of the word when you're asking and talking to him, the Lord through the spirit a lot of times through the spirit his word will come back to you he'll bring stuff to your remembrance and uh, a lot of times you feel blessed because of that and uh, of course it's happened to me and it is it's a, it's a blessing to hear back from the Lord to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation that at one point we Gentiles were considered dogs and didn't have that right but we were grafted in okay uh, at one point, it says, "Be careful, because you know we were grafted in, so we, we can we can be taken out." 
I don't know why people don't teach stuff like that anymore. It's like they're scared to, the, the, but, they, but I'll tell you why. Because a lot of times, I've already say, it is a money money situation and a popularity and a job position situation. If you preach some, if you preach a hard doctrine, strong doctrine, uh, what actually God's word teaches and and commands us teachers and preachers to preach, then you're not going to be very popular. I'm not very popular uh, because I say what thus saith the word of God out of His word. Uh, when I have something I talk about, I say this is my opinion, take it or leave it, then then you can do that. But when I'm reading God's Word or talking about God's Word, then you need to give an ear to it and listen. Not because I'm anybody, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm a servant of the Lord. Let's say, and, he, and he gave me certain, uh, certain things, certain ministries to do. And that's what we're doing. So I hope you can say the same thing if he's called you to do something in the ministry that you're doing it and walking in his will and you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord that Job did. So it said in verse 21, and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return thither. Amen. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many people during the, the the financial crash, the last large financial crash that we had, we had people jumping off buildings because they lost everything. Here, more recently, within the banking system, all the problems and all the financial issues of our country and around the world, bankers have died. Some have committed suicide by, like, for instance, uh, maybe. Uh, one of them uh, shot herself, I believe, in the back of the head with a nail gun. You know, three or four times. So, uh, yeah. That, uh, <clears throat> let me just say this. The mainstream news, where we get stuff like that, don't trust. Do not trust the mainstream news. They are part of the, they're part of the big wheel. They're part of the elite and they're only allowed to let let out <clears throat> excuse me let out and uh, talk about and have news pieces only what the elite want them to put out uh, not going to put out anything of God they're going to put, put stuff out of contention and of the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life that's what you're going to see that's what you see on TV uh, and TV, that's a whole other lesson right there. My goodness. Remember Lester Roloff, if everyone remembers him. Uh, my mighty preacher and Lord and buddy, he would, he, he'd step all over you <laughs> when you, when you heard him preach. Uh, still enjoy hearing him preach. He's, he went on to be with the Lord. Uh, had, he died in a plane crash in like at 1981 or 82 or something like that. Uh, lost a good man of God, but praise the Lord. Uh, he got his reward. Uh, I believe that. I believe he was a, he was a saved and on fire man of God, and that's how I want to be, and that's how the rest of you teachers and preachers and lay members should want to be on fire always for the Lord, ready to do what He wants you to do. So, Job here has all this happening to him, and he said, "Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away." How many of you can say that if you've gotten a large sum of money and you've, you know, for some reason, or you're rich and because of something, all of a sudden it gets taken away? Are you going to be able to say, and, and that money, it can be something else. Are you going to be, are you, are you strong enough? Are you solid enough? Are you grounded enough in the will of God to be able to say, the Lord giveth and the Lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord and the next thing which is can you believe in all this that Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly so people that say well I can't help I can't help sinning just a little bit every day won't you talk to Job what'd he say what God's word say about it, it said in, in all this Job sinned not 
nor charge God foolishly. I know you you guys out there are going to say you're in the flesh, so you're gonna you're gonna sin and stuff like. That. I understand that. I understand this flesh is not perfect, but the Lord in the New Testament, the Lord tells us through His Word, said to strive for the perfecting of the saints. That's one of the things that you're striving for. Is when you get saved, you go through the sanctification process. You get being gifted with the, the the gift of the Holy Ghost of God being put upon you. That's the thing. Your sinning should stop at an incredible accelerated rate as far as you can move up in the Lord and how quickly. Now some people have a lot more stuff in their life that needs to be cleaned up. Don't say, for instance, I, I'm going to do this and stop this and do this and I've got to get, get all this taken care of and straightened out before I go to church. No, no. Come on to church. Come back to the Lord or come to the Lord if you need to be saved. And he can take all that stuff away and start you on the path of getting you out of that sinning business. Now, I know, like I said, this flesh, you can even have a bad thought in your mind right there. A lot of people talk about that. So, well, if, you know, even, even if you can stop whatever in the flesh or, or whatever sin, you still think of something or something like that in your mind. Of course, because we, we, you know, we still are in, in this flesh. But let me tell you, your sinning should de decrease exponentially when you come to know God or you come back to God. So, and all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. The Lord Jesus didn't commit any sin. Now we have that, you know, we see that the apostles, especially poor Peter, <laughs> we're we get down on Peter sometimes because that because a lot of people identify more with Peter than they say than the, than they do say uh, Paul, because uh, uh, you know we don't don't see a lot of. of what we would consider sinning and failure and everything in Paul's life. He was a, a mighty spiritual warrior. So we have two contrasting. I think Peter at one point, after all the problems that, that he had, he, he you know, we, we don't have a, a record, only record, uh, of course you can probably, I'm sure you can, since the Vatican believes he was the first Pope, you could go in and I'm sure they'd have some extra biblical text uh, that uh, you know that's not in our canon of scripture that may tell more about what Peter and everything but yeah Peter had a hard time he had a rough time uh, you know to deny the Lord and uh, who was it uh, uh, was it Philip that uh, no it was actually I can't remember my mom I'm sorry my mom can't remember the, the name of the disciple, but the one when Jesus appeared and said, uh, uh, "Thomas, that's it. Thank you, Lord." Doubting Thomas, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Said, so I, "If I if I can't see the wounds or feel the, the wounds and see it, you know, and, and have that proof to me that I'm not going to believe the Lord has risen." Well, guess what? He got his opportunity. See the wounds in his hand. Put your hand aside. Feel where the spear went in, and the blood and water come out. Uh, so at one point doubting Thomas became believing Thomas so uh, saw the Lord uh, resurrected wow imagine mm. uh, it gets you excited thinking about it because uh, we're going to have those bodies we're going to have glorified bodies that we don't have to worry about oppression depression uh, the, the, the hindrance and the constant barrage from uh, the of fiery darts from the enemy, you know, like sickness or old age or anything, you're going to have it all. Hey, you've got if you're saved, you've got it all right now. It's just waiting for you. Think about that. That should make you want to not do anything and go back to the sin and, and the things that the, the, there, there's pleasure. In, the Bible says pleasure in sin for a season. Let me give you this warning. It'll catch up with you though. And it said when sin is finished, it brings forth death. And even though that, and I don't say this to discourage anybody, you need to come to the Lord and be saved or come back to the Lord and renew your relationship and repent. 
but whatever you've done may have to run its course. I've said that many times. A lot of people just believe once you get saved and everything, it's a rose garden, everything is going to go away. But a lot of times, the things that you've done, you still have to answer for. And insert insert whatever you want to in that place, whatever. Sometimes you still have to answer for things that you've done while you've been out of God's will. Uh, that's just the way of life. Well, you got to put it. You know, he put us on this this planet, put us in this reality, and, you know, uh, that's just the way it works. I've seen it many, many times. People still have to answer. They're still, they still love God and still bless God and worship Him. They, but but they they pay the piper <laughs> and the old, as the old saying uh, just because you know they have to in many ways like I said I'm, I won't name a lot of stuff and everything like that because you know I've known too, too many people in the confidence you know talking to them and everything about stuff and issues that they've had to deal with and still deal with after they come to the knowledge of the truth and are saved <clears throat> or have come back to the Lord and like I said, renewed the relationship and asked for forgiveness and, you know, pick the cross back up. You know, don't turn around. Don't, it said it's not, you're not fit if you grab hold of the plow and you turn around and let go of the plow. Don't do that. You pull that plow and keep going. In 22, it said, in all this, Job sin not nor charge God foolishly. Wow, think about that. Ponder, see law. It says in the Bible, ponder on it. Think about that. All that he went through. Read back through it again. Read back through, through the first chapter again when you get a chance. And, and, and let that sink in, all that stuff that, we've, uh, that we talked about and see what all that he went through. So we'll start back on or start actually on uh, second chapter of Job, Job 2 and verse 1. And we are back again to a meeting in the, what I would call the third heaven where the throne room of God is. Uh, it says in verse 2, or verse, verse 1, excuse me, again there was a day when the sons of God, and there again that word again is Meneha Elohim, it's angels. Uh, to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord and once again you may ask well what's the you know what's he coming with the angels for before God to present themselves for the Lord well it doesn't really say uh, you know maybe 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 the Lord said you're going to present yourself as well we don't know you know that's just one of those things where you know I made up a little funny kind of name for what for me called you know I've told I think I've mentioned this before and that, that's a I call myself a, a theoretical theologian <laughs> think, think I look at these things and ponder and wonder and imagine and think and try to get into what it's saying and the other possibilities of what could happen you know along with what it said it said this so it could mean this or it does mean this but it could also mean other other things as well so uh, at any rate Satan still has access at this point and, you, and you, you'll, you'll see that he is Satan at this point he is no longer Lucifer he, he said the, the sin in the garden has already happened he's now Satan the adversary so he came with the sons of God the angels to present you know, before the Lord to present themselves and once again it says in verse 2 and the Lord said unto Satan this is in the first chapter he said from whence comest thou and Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it the enemy right now is on the move and he attacks you I I, I, like I said if you're in God's will and walking in his will he will attack you I don't mean to say that to scare anybody, but I like to say, you know, you know, my old saying, where the rubber meets the road. Hey, I'm going to tell you what it says. I'm going to tell you the truth about what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to make things sound, you know, try to be like a car salesman and do that. I'll tell you what 
the word of God said, and it talks about he is going to and fro up and down the earth like a roaring lion at one point, said, seeking whom he may devour, who he may take with him to hell and then the lake of fire in the end. So that's why we have to have that protection, okay? We have to be saved, we have to be protected, uh, be possessed by the Spirit of God. That way we can fight the enemy, have the ability and the power to fight the enemy when these trials and temptations come, that such as happened to Job so far. Have to be powerful in the Lord, and more so in these last days. Because right now, people, there is a, the Bible says, a, there, there will be a time when there was a famine in the land. Not of bread, not of water, anything like that, but a famine of the word of God being preached. So what are you talking about? There's, pre, there's churches on every block at our corner, and uh, there's, there's bunches of televangelists and, and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that's true. But if you watch some of them, or listen to some of them, at one point, they're going to get off in left field somewhere and have a doctrine that's totally, totally against what the Word of God said. I'll give you a quick example. Don't mention any names or one popular preacher that said that you could take the mark of the beast and that you could still be saved. It's a false doctrine. He's a false prophet. He said that because the Bible says, God's Word says, if you take that mark, then you are sealed for hell. You've relied, if you take that mark, you've relied upon the Antichrist, the beast system. You're calling him your Lord and God and Savior. So therefore, you're sealed. You're, but there, I think there are other things, and I've said, you guys have heard me say it before. I believe that's not just the only thing. I believe there are other things that go in that make the mark of the beast. It's not just that one thing that you choose him. Okay? I believe that there are other things that go in that make them. There are several different things that go into making what the mark of the beast is going to be. Uh, don't know why the Lord had me go that way, but maybe someone had a question about it or was thinking about it. Who knows? Praise be to God. Uh, so at any rate, uh, there again, the point of the matter we talked about was the enemy, Satan. He is going about, walking about to and fro, uh, you know, seeing who who, who he can uh, de oppress and depress and uh, who he can try to kill, to just flat, flat out kill by some means. Uh, you know, put, uh, down, uh, depress someone so bad that they'll put a gun to their head and blow their brains out. Uh, like I said, so we 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 gotta be we gotta be in the Lord. We gotta be saved, walking in the power of God, because you know we, it's not just Him. You know, we got we've got demonic spirits, unclean spirits that we have to battle against. Plus the fallen angels that are still on the loose. Now the ones talked about in the Old Testament in Genesis 6 you'll find they're talked about in the books of Peter and the book of Jude they are they are sealed and now it in Jude they translated the word hell okay that but the one the word in the Greek there is the Greek word Tartarus now anybody familiar with Greek legend or mythology or whatever you want to call it Tartarus, Tartarus in their religion was the lowest place in the earth at the core the very bottom part where the titans that they called were sealed in uh, so it's interesting talks about the fallen angels being and he uses that word Tartarus so we get we're getting a little bit of a crossover, and we're seeing you seeing how this stuff is moving, how, how this stuff is going together, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't believe really actually truly gives the credence to the Bible that it deserves, and authenticity through some of the other stuff doesn't need it because you know what God's word you should interpret God's word by using God's word, and that's what we do. So. 
moving on. I just feel like that's a that's a, that's another area I want to get into. I do. I may do it after we get out and finish with Job. So uh, in verse three, the Lord once again he says, "And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? Wow, uh, a perfect and upright man, and one that feareth God and escheweth evil." And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. God knew what he was doing, of course. <laughs> without a doubt. You don't doubt that whatsoever. God knew what the Satan was doing. Uh, There's just, just no question. It was laugh it'd be laughable to, to say otherwise. Uh, and in verse four that it said and Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. It says in verse 5, But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So now they're getting ready to move upon his health, his body. Now, no people will say this, I don't know if anybody has has ever went into the hospital, okay? Maybe in a uh, critical care type unit to visit somebody, stay with somebody, whatever the case may be. And uh, maybe you're visiting somebody and you're someone, maybe next door or whatever door down, sitting there and they're just wailing and uh, in pain and you know uh, d d just, just miserable just miserable and out I met sometimes out of their head and just hollering and you know just uh, a lot of times it's a very sad sobering really uh, scene and and, and uh, something that you uh, that you don't forget that you were it's there again one of those things that the Lord puts before you to remind you how blessed that you really are. So we know that touching that uh, something like that, maybe right then, uh, a person like that is being tormented by the devil. So we can imagine what he's wanting to do to Job. And uh, verse six it says, "And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life." Do whatever you want to, put ever whatever you want to on him. Just don't take his life. So I don't give you. I, I, he said, I don't give you that authority. He, I'm paraphrasing. And he said, he said, just uh, save his life. Don't take his life. So Satan, let me scroll down here. If I can. Well, I'm sorry. Give me just one second here to. Here we go. <laughs> That's better. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord in verse 7 and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. I don't know if anyone has had like an ingrown hair on their arm, for instance, or even a small little boil. Can you imagine boils, large ones, small too large whatever from head to toe your entire body covered in them we know this one is painful enough if you if you get one in your arm or wherever we know just we know this one is pain enough imagine in sensitive areas we'll say to make this family friendly uh, imagine in sensitive areas having this issue Put upon you, have had this problem put upon you. Uh, talk about being in pain, and uh, some people would even be saying, "Oh Lord, just, you know." At this point, at this point, a lot of people would be saying, "Lord, just take take me on. I'm I'm in this misery. Uh, uh, I've lost everything. I'm I'm, I'm you know I've, I've got I'm sick. I've, I'm in pain all the time." You know, just go ahead and take me home. Uh, but what Job did, let me show you in verse 8, and read with me. He said, he took him a pot shirt, a piece of like a pot or something like that, 
to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. So he was sitting there trying to scrape the boils off. Imagine that. That's painful. I'm telling you, just like, like I said, for instance, just a, a small boil on your arm or maybe an ingrown hair that's, that's, that's festered up, as we call it, and you sit and you scrape with your fingernail, it, it, it's painful. That's small. Think about a large one being covered in. You're sitting there and you're scraping them and busting them and everything. Think about that. I know that's not the greatest thing, the horriblest thing that could happen to you. But for some reason, that's the way that this worked out. This was what the devil, or the Lord allowed Satan to put upon him. And then, uh-oh, here we go. Verse 9. Thank God for the good help meets that God gives us. Uh, but in this case, uh, Job's wife had a little bit of lapse in faith. Said, in verse 9, said, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Thanks, wife. Thanks for the thanks for the uh, uh, the help there, and the you know the uh, <laughs> the love and the tenderness and uh, you know the, the, may, the, who knows. Now the opinion opinion time. Who knows? Maybe she thought that he actually had did something. We don't know that. The three friends will eventually get into talking about was sure that he did something. But who knows, maybe his wife think, thought he might have did something, uh, a sin against the Lord to get all this put upon him. We're just, you know, we're just not told. Uh, but still, she says, well, you, you know, why don't you just curse God and die? Well, no, why don't you, you know, like during that time, give up an offering for the Lord and seek the Lord for for your husband's uh, health and his blessings and his, uh, you know, for him to be renewed, you know, and uh, uh, the afflictions taken away. Men and women out there, you know, friends, if you've got a good help meet that'll take care of you, especially when you're sick and that, you know, that does everything they can for you and you do for them, that's the way it should work, okay? People point out, you know, the whole issue about the man being the Lord over the woman and everything. The Bible does say that Adam was created first and then the woman. We're supposed to be, and I'll say, and this is not a popular doctrine these days, especially now, but man's supposed to be the head of the house okay it's god's word i'm not going to change it that's what it says now i'm not coming down like i said and got a whip or anything or a belt and saying i'm commanding you to do this do it now or suffer the consequences no 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 you show your wife do benevolence and in turn, she shows the same thing to you. It's it's a work together type thing. While thinking about that, it's a hard, especially thing. And I heard people talk about it before, especially in a, in a church service, someone come in like a a, a a woman, and basically she just kind of, when the prayer requests happen, talk about, hey, I'm having marital problems. I'm here, but my husband is not doesn't want to you know and please pray for our marriage and everything uh you see that happen more often than not uh one is willing and wanting the marriage to work and trying to save it and the other just has no interest in saving just wants to go just wants to jump out as quick as they can uh i hope whoever has done that or thinking about doing that, if you see this, that you'll consider God's word, what it says about about marriage, and with the person that you originally chosen to spend the the remainder of your life with, because I believe that I believe once we did have that help meet, we meet the help we we married, 
it's supposed to be for life and it's supposed to hop from one to another that's not God's will okay we are to have have a wife you're to be the head of the household you know be with children there again you know what I say I don't dare any, tell anyone how to raise your children I just tell them what God's word said and I said most of the time the first thing I start off with is what it said what it said to raise your kids and rear them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord amen don't dare tell them unless they just ask me an opinion well so and my son or my daughter's doing this what do you think what's your opinion on the matter of what to do you know then then, then I'll try to help somebody but I'm not gonna sit and point my finger at somebody you know especially when I don't have children myself okay um, but Job's wife like I said maybe who knows we don't know that we don't know what she was thinking maybe she believed that he actually did something uh, or, or maybe the the maybe Satan got to her and changed her way of thinking and uh, you know to the point of what we would call today uh, they you know want you know, mad at this at whatever and I'm, I'm not in love with this person anymore and I want to divorce them maybe it was a situation like that and the devil was in the midst of it he was in the midst of everything else in his life so who knows uh, but nevertheless what she said is what she said she said dost thou still retain thine integrity question mark said curse God and die just get it over with but Job good old Job good old Saul of Job verse uh, 10 he's, but he said unto her thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh what shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil in all this did Job sin did not in all this did not Job sin with his lips so let me say this and I, I, I say this kind of respectfully and I'm, I'm talking about it at this angle between Job and his wife he kind of put her in her place talk with as long as 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 far as what the Lord commanded and what and you know saying hey you know we we receive good at the hand of God so you know don't be surprised when and we can apply this to us today be surprised when the enemy comes and tries to attack us especially when God is blessing because that's when he, a lot of times he's going to try to attack so like I said we want to be a possession of the Lord I know a lot of us there again when God's blessing or when you have problems or something the devil attacks and he tries to oppress you and depress you and to make you think there's no hope and everything like that that's where that's where your prayer that open open line of communication between you and the Lord that's where that comes in you need to be on your hands and knees kneeling or laying flat on the ground and coming to the Lord for your strength for each and every need that you have and you may just be in the valley but remember we say this a lot remember that Jesus he is that lily of the valley he's with you when you walk through it of course it's great to be on the mountain hallelujah yeah you're on the mountain everything's going good but there are times that you're in the valley that you're walking could be a time of learning could be just something that happens from life but the Lord is still there to walk with you through it that's a consolation that's awesome you know you used to think when you used to hear that when you're in the valley oh you're just alone and you've got to face everything and uh, you know do all this by yourself and everything no the Lord is with you through that through that time but he is the lily of the valley that's good that's good stuff right there that's uh, uh, <laughs> should give us hope and give us strength and give us joy knowing that knowing if something happens now I know stuff can happen in this life that'll make you feel like that you want to die so let's get down to business here let's get down to brass tacks a lot of times you're so depressed so down that you that you might say Lord 
just I'm not you know you may not curse God and die but you're, but you're saying Lord I'm miserable please just take me take me away out get me out of this I don't see any way out please just take my life the devil is responsible for all that making you think that there is no hope like, let me tell you right now that there is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ there is hope in in, in God in Jehovah God you have when you get saved you have that open communication open line between you and the creator of all everything ever has been is and will be so is he not big enough and large enough for, to handle the problems that you're having amen you bet he is and this is what Joe he is still keeping his integrity do you still keep your integrity when you go through adversities say something small hey, some, for some people it just takes something small and it sets them off on this path of self pity of uh, oh why is this happening to me and goes on and, all that. and that's when, and it's normally that's when the Lord puts someone in your path to show you just how blessed that you are because I've seen some pe pe people that, that are pitiful. If I'm having a bad day and I'm saying, Lord, why is all this happening? Well, I guess the Lord puts someone in front of me. And sometimes it may just be a, a pass by. Somebody that may be confined to a wheelchair and that can't talk, just that just, you know, you've seen people like that. And I'll say it, they have, that has, you know, I'll just I'll say I'm trying to be nice here with retardation issues. We'll say it that way, uh, and it's sad. It about breaks your heart. But one of the first things that comes to you when you see that is, uh, and I've been complaining about because this didn't go my way today. Now and you're standing there with your full strength, your full mind, and you're walking. And everything keep that in mind bear that in mind think on that I know I, I think I use that example a lot but you know why because it's a sobering example of sometimes people just being pitying on their self as opposed to seeing someone who is actually pitiful and some even that has cancer. We'll say that I'm gonna use the cancer zone because it's going, it's running rapid right now. Some people still are sitting there and keeping their integrity and keeping their smile and their happiness. A lot of them are very, very sick. So what if we, me and you, that's sitting here, that's got our full faculties, that doesn't have any disease, that doesn't have any problems, as far as health, and we're doing okay otherwise? What have we got to complain about? We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. I tell you, we was going to get down to brass tacks. We uh, we should be ashamed of ourselves if we start uh, complaining about some kind of issue because something small didn't go right. Well, I, I wanted this thing and I couldn't get it. Or uh, I wanted to go here and I couldn't. Or, or whatever, insert any, whatever in there something small something meaningless and you're mad about it while there are people out there that are that have probably uh, I'll say it this way if anyone had a right to want to die then these people I'm not now I'm not saying talking about assisted suicide or any of that garbage I'm talking about if anyone had a reason to complain these people I'm talking about they would have a reason well, let me tell you something. A lot of them, they don't. You should learn something from that. There's learning in that right there. That's wisdom, not from my, not from my end. That comes from God. To whoever hears this and listens to this later on, because God's word will not return void. When you send it out, it will go out and it will accomplish, and go to who it's supposed to go to. So bear that in mind. Next time you're having a bad day, 
somebody walks in front of you that's about 100 times worse than you are health wise or whatever think about that and I pray the Lord brings it to your remembrance when you see it in a mighty way and makes you realize how blessed you are just like Job right here with all that with all the stuff that happened to him he still kept his integrity and said didn't sin with his lips he could have went on a big cursing uh, you know cussing fit as we call it and uh, just gave up you're saying are you sure that means when it talk about sin with his lips well yeah he he could he could have he could have uh, did what she what his wife uh, was urged to. I say urged to doesn't I, you know my my there again here we go opinion take it or not that Satan was working through her as well doesn't say that okay I'm just there again <laughs> theoretical theoretical theologian uh, that maybe good possibility that he was working through her. When he said that, he said, just curse God and die. But all that, he didn't sin with his lips. I mean, he did not curse God, so he didn't die. Now, let me tell you something. While we're just talking on the subject about cursing and sinning with the lips, you preachers, you teachers out there, and there are some that's popular, especially around our area, that uh, that have, that have a, tel a, a televised service. Let me just say this: You guys that have that 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 are teaching or preaching, and sin with your lips, and in this case, I'm talking about. Well, for one thing, we talk about people that say that you can take the mark of the beast and still go to heaven. Um, more specifically, and some people just find this hilarious. Everything uh, a pastor will say a few. Uh, colorful words behind the pulpit. Let me let me say this: shame on you. You're to be an example to that flock that you're teaching or preaching to. You know, in God's word, it tells us that we're, we're to have our speech has to be cleaned up. Now, I know what the Old Testament said, you know, said, oh, I'm, I don't believe it was Isaiah said, I'm, I'm a man of unclean lips. And, you know, he sat down and put the brand to his tongue and everything like that. And we still have the propensity to say and, and, and do whatever. But you teachers and you pastors that are allowing the stuff of the world to come inside the church and coming through you, you know something? You need to be... Not up behind the pulpit, but you need to be down the altar. If there's an altar in that church anymore, most of the time there's not anymore. They're taking the altars out. Doesn't mean anything anymore. Don't have to worry about repentance. Don't worry about the blood of Jesus. Just live a good life. Come to church. Put your offering in here. Use your app on your phone that we've made especially for the church. And you send us your tithe and do whatever you want to. Go Sunday and sit in the boat and uh, send your tithe in. I'm done. I did it. You know, that, that's my that's my contribution for the day. Cast your line out. It's up there. Let me tell you something. Like I said, God is going to hold, and this this is me, this includes me as well, as being a preacher and a teacher. God is going to hold us to a higher standard of what we've said and what we've done to people uh, as far as teaching and preaching, giving advice, uh, especially like I said I like saying when something when I'm talking about something when it's my opinion okay because I don't want people to think that I'm making trying to make it say something that it's not I'll say well I'm not sure but this is just my opinion take it or leave it but this is what God's word this is what it says read it so anyway there again you teachers you preachers clean it up Clean yourself up. Something's wrong somewhere when you're doing stuff like that. You're saying, brother, you're judging these people. You judge a tree by the fruit it bears. I'm not going to these people and wagging my finger in their face. I'm just saying right now of what I've seen and heard. 
you know, I don't make things up. I'm not lying. But there's stuff that men do and and, and women do. They're not, but women, you're you're not exempt from this. Some of the things that you do and some uh, let's put it this way. Let's let's use this for some some of the things that you wear or that you allow your you allow your children to wear to church. You're supposed to be raising them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I'm drawing the line right there and won't go any further talking about the kids. It's up to you to raise your own kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I said that's as far as I go. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, which way to do it, unless you ask me, in my opinion. But that's where I draw the line. It's what God's Word said. I know this I know this kind of took a little bit of a turn but I, I felt led that if I if I, if I didn't I wouldn't have went this way but I felt led to go this way talking about this because it has a lot to do with it when talking about it going through adversity going through time I, people will go, will go through the smallest thing and they'll sin with their lips they'll curse God they won't keep their integrity those people are still on the milk. They're still babes in Christ. They're still the milk of the gospel. They've not reached adulthood and on the meat of the gospel and understand it can take it and go in and read it and study it and know where this stuff's coming from and know how to keep their integrity in the Lord. Amen. So, basically, Job is rebuking his wife at this point, and he and he puts, poses that question to her. And at the very end, of it, he said, "And all this did not Job sin with his lips?" Let me paint a picture for you here, as an example. Uh, I kind of tilted that way a minute ago when I talked about it. You know, being in the hospital, and I know you, you guys have seen commercials for it too. You go in the hospital and you see a kid maybe that's 10, no, you know, whatever, eight, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. They're bald. Why, they're, why are they bald? Because they're going through chemotherapy, because they've got cancer. Yet they're still laughing and giggling and got a smile from ear to ear. And you had a dispute a few minutes ago with the parking attendant for some reason when you pulled in to a hospital to see something. And that just ruined your day and made you mad and made you start cursing and everything. You've done it to your shame. You need to look, you need to do what God wants you to do. Uh, he, 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 if you if you if you stay there, you're 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 just going to be a babe in Christ all along. You're not going to grow. You're going to have the blessings of God. You're going to be an easy target for the enemy. Now, I'll say this, and people will say and listen to this. Well, he's doing this just to make people whatever you know. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to paint a picture for you and stuff, and give an example, just a little bit of an example of what. Maybe Job went through. You know, we got to remember he did lose his children. Even with that, what he say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So be an adult. People out there, be an adult in Christ. Grow in Christ and act like a mature Christian. But being like a babe in Christ or just a babe in general and throwing fits when stuff doesn't go your way or you or whatever. I'm preaching to myself as well. I'm not just pushing this all to you, but I'm preaching to myself. The Lord is preaching to me as well. Okay? I think we're going to end at verse 10 because in verse 11, uh, we're going to get into... Oh boy, 
Job's friends that's going to come and comfort him. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes in the next one. Uh, so we'll, we'll leave off at verse 10. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. He didn't curse God and die. He didn't curse God. He didn't sit there and curse and you know have a big, like I said, big hissy fit as we call it, and stomp and go on like I've seen. I've seen people do that in churches of men that because they didn't get their way, they try to cause issues. They try to cause problems. Uh, start gossiping and it just goes in one evil work just leads into another evil work I've seen that well you know what if they don't come to an altar of repentance and repent from the stuff they've done and the evil and their evil ways gossip and everything the Lord can take you uh, to a place that you don't want to be or you can allow, I will say this, allow the enemy to take you somewhere that you don't want to be into a situation that you don't want to be. You better take a hot, hot iron to your tongue, to your lips and sear them shut. If you're doing stuff against the man of God and the man of God or teacher of God is right and, 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 and is reading God's word as as it is and pointing stuff out and you just don't like it well he just uh, he's just too serious he's too judgmental you know he just uh he's just too literal with god's word you know i don't like it i don't i don't want to be that i you know i want to be free to do what i want to and do this and do that and whatever you know whatever the case may be well you may maybe maybe you need if you're not happy maybe you need to find a church that has that has a loose doctrine that'll suit you Brother Tim, what are you talking about? What are you saying? To, well, if you're not happy where you are and you're not going to repent from your ways and follow the true, an uh, uh, true straight line, plain word of God as it reads, instead of trying to find a different meaning to it and a way to escape the more serious things that it talks about of stuff that you shouldn't do stuff that said is not going to enter heaven that sin that you're doing is like as I said earlier is only fun for a season but you keep doing it and you know what the Lord may give you up yeah yeah it does say that has your conscience seared over with a hot iron they end up blaspheming the Holy Ghost during that. And then you know your ticket is, uh, when you do that, that's another thing. People are preaching that, oh, you know, whatever, you know, blaspheme the Holy Ghost, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. God, you know, God is just love and he don't mind and he's just, you know, he's just, let me tell you something. God is a jealous God. He is a loving God, no doubt. And here, here's Needy Cat again. He is a loving God, no doubt, but he is also a jealous God. This is God's word I'm talking about not making this up so let me just say this you Christians out there that's supposed to be adult grow up in the Lord and act like the men and women that you should be in the Lord brother this has been kind of a hard lesson it's been kind of a serious lesson well good because I attended it that way and I appreciate the Lord for guiding and directing that way because for one thing, it'll keep me corrected. But also, with you listening to it, it'll keep you corrected if you listen to it and allow it to. Allow God's word to enter your heart. You listen to it and mine, don't just let it stay up there, forget about it. Let it enter your heart and take a bow there. It's like that's like the Lord what the Lord does when you get saved. It takes a boat with you. It takes up a boat with you in your heart, in your life. Let me ask you right now, are you saved? Have you been to Jesus for that cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I love that old song. We sing that song a lot.
If you're not saved, let me tell you something. We are in the last days. We are in the famine that talks about of God's word. Not of bread, not of water, but a famine of God's word. The true God's word being preached. In latter times, we're seeing the falling away of the true church. Sure, we're seeing mega churches and other churches and everything grow. But the word of God is not being preached. So, that's a falling away. Doesn't just mean people leaving in droves from the church. Unfortunately, that is happening as well. But also the people are still are having a famine of God's word in the, in in the in supposed these supposed what you call want to call these churches more of a social event than anything, unfortunately. So let me ask you: Are are you truly saved? Do you truly want to be saved? Then come to the Lord, because it, there's no other way. No other way to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the door to the sheepfold. He is the good shepherd. He's the one that when we start getting out of line, there's that, that, that staff and pulls us, starts pulling us back. You all want to come back too. Sure, you can, you can uh, hop out of there and never come back again. But if you go back and do pick up the things that you used to do, let me tell you, it says the stuff, and it gives it, it, several times, several, it gives me the things that you, you could pile all of it in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You go back to all that right there. It said all, that's not going to enter heaven. So where does that leave you? If you're in sin. It's just, this is serious, people. Stuff like this is not being preached anymore. People are preaching that you can just do whatever you want to and you're going to get by. Let me tell you something. I don't know what Bible they're using, but my Bible doesn't say that. Anyway, I'm going to end this. <laughs> I went over an hour. Hope I didn't wear anyone out. Uh, we got to, and we'll go back the next time. To Job chapter 2 verse 11 and uh, we'll pick up back there might do like I said we'll do a quick review uh, of what or you can beforehand uh, do a quick review of what we went over and we'll start in in verse 11 as I said here come the three friends oh boy <laughs> get ready for some uh, advice that wasn't that's going to turn out to not be so good but anyway, God bless each and every one of you. It was good to uh, be back and uh, getting back on track trying to get these videos done. I know there was a few day gaps in the days that I wasn't on. I didn't, I didn't do one. Some sickness, some other things. Uh, but uh, God bless us in a mighty way. Uh, we thank Him for the days given us. I've been out. I've, I did actually did some mowing earlier, and it's a beautiful day out sun is out the woods is beautiful i'm looking through the window right now so let's thank the lord for the beautiful day that he's given us and the breath of life most of all if you are saved you thank him for the salvation that he has given you that you're saved knowing that you're going to be if you're if you die in this present life to be absent in the body to be present with the lord you're going to go to heaven and be with him forevermore and that's the greatest gift that we ever receive so let's thank him for it and appreciate him for it and show show him how much we love him and we appreciate him uh, by praise and worship and that's how we do it he expects us to have praise and uh, do praise and worship lift him up and praise and worship so wherever you are even in the smallest ways do that anyway this was Tim Again, I don't want to keep going. I could, I could keep going on for another hour, but uh, I don't want to wear anybody out, like I said. So at any rate, um, as I said, God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you in your life. Uh, pray that you have 
uh, power with God, you're saved, and you can. If the enemy comes and attacks you, you can defend yourself and repel his attack. Remember that spiritual armor. Keep it on. Don't don't, don't take it off at all. Uh, that's in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, read about the spiritual armor. But anyway, we will see you in the next uh, video. And uh, everybody, take care. And uh, hopefully, uh, needy cat here won't. Uh, disturb me next time <laughs> I need to start closing her out anyway take care and god bless and uh, we love y'all and pray for us we'll pray for you and we'll see you in the next video take care god bless